Monday Monday porch tops? Mm hmm. Okay. Monday edition, here we go. Welcome to Porch Talk with Chris and Laura. I'm Chris. That's Laura. No! It's kind of subdued. Yeah. Yeah, your voice isn't. It's kind of going back and forth. Well, I just, you know, I on a personal note, would like to know what's up with the animal kingdom in the house. I, I just don't know. I, I can't. <laughs> it's... Yeah. You got I mean, flames coming out of your ears. Trying to get on the table. Morning. The little one's running back and forth, get on the counter in the kitchen. In the clean dishes. And Kitty's actually been the best. And he's I still can't been even pain. Believe that. What am I, Jack Hanna? It's not like I can put him in a car and take him to the show. <laughs> I would if I could. Did you see me strolling into a movie, you know, like Rogue One, let's say, with Kitty the Diggity Dog. <laughs> and three cats. And three cats. Yeah. One yeah. of them who thinks he's, you know, Dawn of the Neighborhood. He's the littlest one. He walks around like he's a pimp. He's the only one that stands up to Kitty. Kitty's actually afraid of him. Yeah. I love it. It's kind of it's kind of awesome. It is awesome. Well, we have some sad news mm. about one of your favorite bands. I know. Yeah. This was very upsetting to me. I don't... On, we need a moment of silence. <laughs> on April 14th, uh, Dean Wetter, who's Ann Wilson's husband, mm -hmm. uh, was sentenced for charges that he pled guilty to on March 9th for an incident in August of last year where he, you know... Uh, was accused and convicted of <coughs> fourth degree assault on Nancy's children. No, that just slapping them around or something. Yeah, if, if that happened, happened, no, you can't do that. Yeah, the incident occurred on a tour bus, and it was said that uh, you know there were already, you know, that the marriage caused rifts in the family. Yeah. And the Wilsons were already found themselves at odds. That makes me about so the, sad. About the future. So, you know, um, and although they both believe that the relationship could be repaired, but I mean, this could very well be the end of the part. I, I really just don't want to think that. So I'm going to, I'm going to try not to, this, because I love them. I've loved them forever. This last tour mm -hmm. was the first time they ever had separate dressing rooms since yeah. they started in the sixties together. They've been playing since they were little girls. They're sisters. Yeah. That's sad. And such a perfect blend. I, I love them. It's sad, man. It's really sad. I hope that they can fix it. I really do. I do too. Mend the fence and, and get on and keep playing good music. I mean, that is another bucket list of mine is to see Heart. I've never seen them. I, I and, probably and know every you, song of theirs. And what if you can't now? I know. Yeah. Crazy. I mean. It's like it, every band that we want, yeah. we want to see that, you know, is that bucket list. Something happens. Exactly. Rush. But I know. Heart. I know. Prince. Prince. Ugh. I'll never get over that one. No. Well, in some non-music related news, there's been a lot of stuff about, you know, the, the Moab bomb, the mother of all bombs. Mm -hmm. This 21,000 pound bomb manufactured in McAllister, from what I of understand. Of course. That's so Death Con 5 around here. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, it cost $314 million to make one mm -hmm. bomb that they dropped. Well... You know, and they dropped it basically money. in the middle of nowhere, but it was actually very, there's a mosquito over there, watch out. Mm -hmm. It was strategically dropped because um, it was dropped on Tora Bora. Now, Tora Bora is a system of caves in Afghanistan on the Pakistani border mm -hmm. that the CIA in the 70s and 80s helped construct along with the Bin Laden family for the Mujahideen. Who were, fighting, who were fighting the Soviets. Right. They were supporting a war against the Soviets. We're talking 50 yards inside this mountain. I know. And all these series of tunnels and everything that are fortified. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, these are the tunnels we built that terrorists have been using for 20 years. Okay? To go back and forth through Pakistan. Where did we find Bin Laden? Pakistan. Mm -hmm. You know? Not yeah. that far away from where we're talking about. So that's where they dropped this bomb, dude. Now, regardless whether you're anti-government military complex, which I find myself on that side of the fence in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. that, you know, the things that are done mil 
voluntarily are pretty much futile and useless. You know, it could be done different. But still, the awesome fact about this... It is so awesome. <laughs> it's got a mile-wide blast radius, okay? Mm -hmm. This big thing, quote from the Daily Mail, in milliseconds, in the milliseconds following the initial blast, all oxygen will be forced out of the tunnels and for hundreds of feet around, literally sucking the life out of terrorists and suffocating them as their lungs implode. Amen. That's awesome. That's metal, yeah. That's awesome. It is. That's just like... That's America, yeah. DEFCON 5, man. Whoa! Boom. Boom. It's so cool. It is cool. So, they said that initially only 36 were killed. Mm -hmm. They found a lot more already. Um, it's at 94 and climbing. Really? And there's only an estimate of about 800 ISIS fighters. So, they've already, you know, in one initial impact, yeah. despite the cost of this bomb, they've eliminated somewhere between 10 to 15 percent of the ISIS fighters <coughs> you know, yeah. that are known. I guess if you're going to do it, so do it. There's got to, you know, that's a, I don't know. That's a damn good counterbalance. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just screw them. Boom. Mm -hmm. Get them done. And it kills that series of tunnels and networks that you know, people have been using to traffic stuff in and out of Pakistan right. anyway. So, you know, because it's not just the terrorists. The terrorists are renting out for other people, mm -hmm. arms dealers and this and that that travel through the, you know, tunnels, you know, to go from a, you know, country like Afghanistan that the military has a control on to Pakistan, which is an autonomous country mm -hmm. and allied with the United States, you know, at this point. So, anyway. I thought it was kind of cool about yeah. that. You know, about that. It's a big bomb. The instant suffocation because you're right? Well. That's like, wow. Boom. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, Classic Rock Magazine posted a question today. Okay. And I just want to see if you think what I think. Okay. There's okay. a little test. All right. Question What's the best live album ever recorded and why? Peter Frampton Live. Peter Frampton Live. What? Oh, really? Yeah, for real. So much so. I, yeah, I, I mean, that's the... What, what is, like, the best-selling live album of all time up until a certain point? I or think maybe so. maybe even still? You know what? None of that even matters to me. I just know that I loved it. I mean, loved it. Was, it. it was cool. I was in grade school. Frank's in his young. hair. First thing I see is him on that cover. Just him, glorious hair, right? The yeah. guitar. And I'm thinking, that's a rock god. I didn't even really understand what that meant, but I knew that he was it. <laughs> and then he'd listen, you know, and he, he talks with his guitar, with his voice, or whatever he did, it is. Yeah. I always thought it was a guitar. And I'm thinking, wow. The mm -hmm. voice modulator thing. Right? Yeah, that was really cool. It was just so It made me different. feel tingly. <laughs> come on now. You did! Oh, come on now. <laughs> Oh, maybe you can tingling. <laughs> well, at least we agree on that. I mean, there are a lot I've, of other good I've live, never good loved you more than I do right now. But Peter French is live for, I mean, yeah. That's Seriously. A, Classic Rock Magazine, that is Porch Talk's official stance that's on right. the best recorded album and why. One, because it made Laura feel tingly. <laughs> <laughs> and probably millions of other women and men across the United States, mm -hmm. for that matter, or across the world. And two, simply based on numbers. What, but what, why is your reason for it? I just, I, I don't know. Because he's awesome? It was awesome. It was. It was so great. I mean, it's, it's, it's not blues, it's not pop, it's not metal. What it's is not it? Rock, it's Peter it's just, Frampton Live. It's, it's Peter Frampton, it man. Yeah, he's in his own, like, category. He, he is. You Completely. always know it's him. Always. Yeah, I, I absolutely. Not always know it's from him. the guitar or from yeah. the singing. Yeah. And both together, boom. So we, uh, yeah. we confirmed on the event with uh, Roger for okay. May 20th. Right, for our meeting. Yeah, so Forge Talk with Chris and Laura is, I'll bring food. is actually a, uh, we're an official sponsor of WeAreTulsaMusic.com. Yes. So um, as a sponsor, we're going to do our good, our good deed here. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, May 20th is the first meeting set. And initially, Roger, with WeAreTulsaMusic.com, was going to do another Battle of the Bands that we had in March because there were five 
Saturdays in March to mm -hmm. do four showcases and then, in, in the finale, finale mm -hmm. with judges and the whole nine yards. But the consensus among all the musicians that were reached out to, which were a slew of bands, yeah, a that, lot, that he listed on there that he liked to participate. Um, the general consensus is beginning to see that maybe just a Tulsa music showcase. Yeah, I would, really would like be this more, idea. More in uh, more in order, you know, similar to what right. like Ryan and Mugen have done with mm -hmm. the Green Country Fest over yeah. a period of three days. That you know, in the in the fall, in September, since there are five Saturdays, if it's done every Saturday or if it's done just over a period of time, whatever, you know, and there's. I think set. I, this is going to put my two cents in while I'm thinking about it, but I think September is not good because a few things. You've got Labor Day weekend. People are going to be doing other stuff. And two, usually the last week of September is the first weekend of the fair. A lot of people go to that. So just a thought, guys. Maybe it, we need to do it like... in the middle of September? No, I wouldn't do it in September at all. If you've got five in a row, I would do it like at the end like the second week of October. Well, we have like a three-day showcase. Okay. You know, three days in a row, like over Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Friday, well, that, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, then do that in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. But it, yeah, that would be good. That would be okay. Yeah, in right between in between Labor Day and in mm -hmm. between, you know, that... Uh, the fair and all the, the all stuff and, that happens. That's a good, yeah, that's good. I like that. Because by the end of September, football season is a full swing, and people really don't want to do things on Sundays. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That's true. You know, and then college ball is going right. by then, too, and Saturdays are taking some time. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That, that sounds like a pretty good idea. I think so. But anyway. Yeah. Well, we don't need to discuss the ideas. What what we are going to do is, oh, uh, so far, bands that have confirmed that they would like to play and try to make, you know, whatever work, but left straight down, mm -hmm. contingency plan, uh, Carlton Hessen. Screen Red Mutiny, Chuck Cooley, Jimmy Blythe and the Midnight Run, Nocturnal Winter, Pawn Shop Heroes, Steam Shovel, Heartbreak Thieves, and uh, hopefully Black Jelly Bean and the Thieves. I love that. So that's a that's a you know a, yeah. a good nice chunk of bands that have expressed interest and uh, are trying to make it work. The minute we take battle and you know, contest and stuff like that. And I was like, do you notice how many more people want to be on board? I'm, I really think this is the way to go. Yeah. I mean, you can have a battle of the bands, that's sure. fine, but this was <coughs> this was such a positive event. You know, and just basically showcase, just showcasing the talent in yeah. the town, you know, despite, but still, you know, the winners mm -hmm. who were ultra blood got mm -hmm. the opportunity to, you know, win the pot. Right. But yet still, so this is what, you know, the true message is here. Yeah. Not only to, you know, kind of give a list of the bands that are already, you know, expressed interest mm -hmm. and or are, are wanting to, uh, are wanting to play, mm -hmm. is we need sponsors. Yeah, we okay, need sponsors. So we need sponsors, and in order to, you know, make a banner, mm -hmm. and, and to get some, you know, and have some, a t-shirt sponsor. Yeah. And, you know, to make t-shirts to sell. But what we're going to do is, you know, the merch sales and, you know, all of that, we want to be able to pay the bands. That participate in the event. I think that's great. You know, and not just do it as something where they do it for free, but yeah. actually, you know, be able to to pay the fans as well. So, you know, to, to reinvest those proceeds from the sponsors. So, mm -hmm. if you know a business, if you are a business owner, yeah. or you know, what whatever, it doesn't matter. Even if a band wants to sponsor the event, like that's if they right. can't play and they want to sponsor, yeah. sponsored by, you know, yeah. and they kick back this or that or the other, and it doesn't have to be a large no. amount. No, you no, know, donate whatever you can. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You have different levels of sponsorship mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So. Yeah, I think this is, these are all really great but, ideas. And it's, it's going to be a while, and we don't have the really the first meeting no, of the event so. until May 20th. So right, we've we're got gonna, time to... We've got time for okay. other bands to get on board and mm -hmm. say, yeah, they want to be a part of it, and then figure out, okay, we've got this many, so then that would, you know, get it done. But if you've got any, you know, suggestions or, or you know, you're a street vendor as far as got a taco truck. Oh, my gosh. You want to show you up? Know, musicians and taco trucks, it's a win, 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 win all day long. Maybe not on the gastrointestinal system. It doesn't matter. Time, but however, what do we always want? We're out. We need food. Tacos. Food. Tacos. And tacos are is really Tacos, tacos, really tacos. Good tacos. Oh, yeah. Yes. Let's work on that. Make some phone calls. Just so, like that. Yeah. 
spread the word um, mm -hmm. and share the video too so that we can have an admonishment towards, you know, or, or an admonishment for, you know, future sponsors to, to begin to try to, you know, pull it yeah. together. And, you know, we've, this is not something that's unprecedented. No. This is the, this will be the third time, if not mm -hmm. the fourth or fifth, just in a calendar year alone that the Tulsa music community has just simply come together on their own. Yep. And got something done. So, here we go. I love it. I love it. All right, well, I got some interesting this day in history today. Give it to me. Schwab. Right. This day in history in 1982, Motorhead released their fifth studio album, Iron Fist. Oh. Now, this was the end of the era album mm -hmm. because Fast Eddie Clark, one of the original members, left the band, okay? Mm-hmm. After they played a cover of Tammy Wynette's Stand By Your Man. Nice. Matter of fact, he didn't even play on the track. He just left the band. He was, that's it. I'm... <laughs> he done. He gone. I know it's Tammy Wynette, the country song, but why was he so offended by it? I don't know. I mean, it was actually your, kind of cool. Stand by your band. <laughs> <laughs> stand by your band. What's wrong, you big wiener? Seriously. Yeah. I don't well, get come it. Come on, dude. I don't get it. Not, it, still, it still came out and peaked at number six on the UK charts and like number 174 on the Billboard 200. Mm -hmm. So it still did good. It, the quality of the tracks was not as good as what okay. you know, it could have been. But mm -hmm. dude, it's Motorhead, man. Yeah. I mean, uh, Heart of Stone, I'm the Doctor, Iron Fist. I mean, the song had really good songs on it. I mean, if you're a Motorhead fan. so And most of, you know, a lot of the people out there that watch the show are yeah. Metalhead. So. Right. Here's the Schwab. Schwab. Here's the Lemmy. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace, Lemmy. Mm hmm All right. Well, also, in 1908, a group of Tulsans took a picture outside of the Navy building in Washington, D.C. They were a booster club and included Emmett Dalton, the last surviving member of the Dalton gang. And they were in Tulsa. And, I mean, they were from Tulsa, traveling around, they went to St. Louis and stuff like that. Uh -huh. And they were basically promoting and trying to publicize the city of Tulsa, which was then only 10 years old. Isn't that crazy? It was only 10 years old, so they got a parade down Fifth Avenue in New awesome. York City. And President Theodore Roosevelt hosted a party Teddy. for them. Teddy. Teddy mm -hmm. Roosevelt. And it was a big group of dudes. But Emmett Dalton from the Dalton Gang was, was in that. They couldn't have known it was him. I, How could they? I looked I at mean, the Wikipedia on him, and he goes from Missouri to the Carpenter Oh, he was Bay a hellraiser. Mm. And then to prison, and then moved to L.A. But I never knew that he... No, I didn't either. Did he, was he a resident of Tulsa? I don't know. I mean, why would he be in a Tulsa booster club? Maybe he just, but that's awesome. Maybe he robbed some banks around here or did something. I don't know. Well, he... The Dalton Gang, you know they had 12 siblings, I think. Yeah. Huge family, man. Huge I, family. I know. I know. I know. He suffered 23 gunshots during that two bank in a day robbery in Coffeyville, Kansas, where, you know, I think they got That's caught. That's crazy. Did 14 years in prison. 23 times. 23, he got shot 23 times to survive. Mm. And then did 14 years in the, in the pokey. In the pokey. And then was pardoned, got out, became an actor, a real estate agent. Moved to Hollywood, oh, yeah. Bro. There you go, dude. Emma Dalton. Crazy. That was insane. Mm -hmm. I was like, really? That's living a life now. I, I didn't know. What. And if, if Emma Dalton did live here, where did he live? I, we we got to find out. Anyway, it was kind of cool for Tulsa. That's enough, Kenny. Look in the window. Mm. Well, what's the goings ons around the Tulsa towns tonight? <laughs> <laughs> well. What is going on? Well, as usual. We've got Open Jam. Open Jam, the Double R Saloon, yes. hosted by the Rick Macaruso Band. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it's either Karaoke or Cards Against Humanity. I think it's Cards Against Humanity at Billy Renee's. Okay. It's the Singer Songwriter Night at the Colony. Okay. Well, that sounds fine. Um, let's see. There's a concert at the Canes. Who is it? Designer, Rob Stone, Ski Mask, The Slump God, and 16-year-old. Tickets range from $23 to $25. Um, 
Uh, and Death Crown is at Sound Pony. Mm. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Not a big fan of that place. No. I hate to say it. I know. And I saw a post, and if I see it again, I'll share it on the Force Talk page. Red Dirt Music Radio mm -hmm. is debuting tonight on Roger State University Radio, 93 or 91.3 FM at 6 p.m., hosted by Jeremy Scott and Jimmy Ray Taylor. All right. So, Red Dirt Music Radio. Nice. Is that your thing? Mm-hmm. Oh, look who's walking past the fence. That's why he's crying. There's his Smelter. girlfriend, yeah. Move along, floozy. <laughs> Move along. It's causing enough problems. Oh, Mm. I don't have time for all that. Yeah. Why don't you uh, tell people who are sponsored by it? The Drum Shop. Hi, Roger, Roger and guys. Roger C.E. You saw him the other day. Yeah. Looking good. High and tight with the hair. Shaved up. He looked good. Yep. He looked very good, Roger. Yeah. DrumShopTulsa.com. There you go. Need anything. That's right. Get her done. Even if Roger doesn't have it, he's still willing just to go ahead and see what he got. Or, you know, if it yeah. trades in order, it trades in order. There if he's got go. something in stock or whatever, go see Roger, get it taken care of. There's yeah. many of us out there to get it done. Definitely. Unfortunately, it seems that my time behind a drum set is probably pretty limited, unfortunately, with some of the news that I've got regarding my health. But well. it'll be all right. Have, uh, Number one priority is that you're okay. Just for the time being, I'm just doing the acoustic thing yeah. around town. Just a little break. We'll see how that happens. Drum every now and then for people that you know need me to fill in or something like that. But you know, I've, I've resigned my primary band and and uh, yeah. You know, Gotta take care of you. We're just gonna do what we can do for now. I need a co-host for a long, long time. That's right. Sure. This is more important than anything. Mm -hmm. So. An update, and I'm sure some of you um, Force Talk fans and viewers have seen the post that I know. the Schwab Awards are complete, the winners have been chosen, and we stayed up to about 2.30 in the morning last night yep. doing uh, the Schwab Awards. So this year, what we've done is because I am a drummer, you are, and I go through heads like it's going out of style. You do. I have a significant number of Remo heads that I took off a drum set that I bought years ago that mm -hmm. I've carried around as spares. Well, now I've got like an entire really good set of spares Yeah. on top of the ones that are even better right. that are on the set. So I'm not really inclined to carry around a bunch of heads that no. I don't use. Exactly. I'm a Devin's guy. I don't like Remo. Right. I know. But now know this Remo is an Evans there. head, you know, but it's off a old a frosted Gretsch uh, mm -hmm. head that I had off a, a Gretsch Catalina Maple set. But this is what we've done. We've gone ahead and made the 2017 First Annual Schwab Award in the, the category. And this is um, the award for Best Lauraism, which has already been chosen. And then Not it, by me. Me and Laura signed them, and then of course talk with Chris and Laura on the bottom. So that's it. You have used drum heads. And everybody else's are bigger than that, but... Those are your awards, yeah. yeah. I think there's only one or two that are like 10-inch. Yeah. But this is 8-inch. Yeah. Yeah, they're 10-inch they're and, and above and up to up to like 16. Yeah. I think, yeah, 16. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they're pretty big. But uh, they're ghetto. It's all ghetto. They are, and, and we, we just hope love that, them. We hope that, the, that the, you know, the, the winners, you know, take it to heart that we, we simply just are doing this to you know, bring awareness and appreciate uh, the musicians and the bands in our community because, like we said before, you know, Tulsa musicians are always a, a notch above anyone. And, and we, we, we appreciate love Tulsa what, music community so much. We appreciate I mean, it's crazy. Does. Yeah, we do. We Absolutely. love everybody. We love you guys. So, you know, you guys have a great day. Have a great evening. Mm -hmm. Get out to a jam or a singer-songwriter night or something. Be Su safe. Support local music however you can. And, uh, Tomorrow. Tomorrow. We reveal. I said I think I said four nineteen, but tomorrow's the eighteenth, but still. Yeah, tomorrow we will uh we will have the Schwab Wars and Laura will be on camera to help me present them. Oh no. <laughs> so for the Schwab Award winners, when you are announced tomorrow, we plan to hopefully be able to give the Schwab Awards away and take pictures with the Schwab Award winners mm -hmm. as we're presenting their drum heads to them. <laughs> because all of them are clear. 
Yeah. You know, so you're going to have to put like a piece of paper behind it or something. Right. This was the only one that was frosted. Right. Because it's for you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We're going to hang it like this. Yeah. Wherever you want. We'll hang it on here. So it's in the window. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. But I got to, you know. You got to. I got to present it to you still, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yo, win, win for me. <laughs> <laughs> so we got all this give away. Mm -hmm. And we hope to do that at the 420 show. Yes. The tribute to John Halata at Billy Renee's. Yes. Where uh, there's going to be a slew of uh, people playing. Yeah. Scorned, Chuck Cooley, Preston Hayes, Let's Slip the Dogs, Our Winter Year. It's going to be a good show. Lots of people are going to be out. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Yep, lots of them. So, all right. Everybody have so a good day. One shop, two shop. Shop, two shop. Three shop, four. Woo! <laughs> all right. We have the dough. See ya.